gonna take our time. We're gonna change the world. You are tuning in today to This Needs to Be Said, TNTBS, and I am your host, Catherine Waddell. There is such a need for people to be able to be truthful today. We've been tactful all around the world, and in the midst of that, trying to fit in so we conform. We want to be accepted. So one day you ask yourself, what is my truth? While digging through a lot of baggage, gathered from wanting to belong somewhere and not sure what you believe, there's a crying out for all those things that should be said that are not being said. No longer will we pretend that there are no issues to address or that we are only going to talk about certain ones. This show, coupled with our blog site and our website, will be the beginning of you finding your way. There is an elephant in the room. Let's talk about it. You were thinking it. We're going to talk about it. Thank you for joining us today for This Needs to Be Said. There is an elephant in the room. Listen, we're looking forward to sharing some time with you. You're kicking your week off with Dana Sidberry, who is going to talk about marketing trends. And then we also have Valerie Sun that's going to talk about what's happening in the world of politics. I'm going to recap what happened over the weekend. We had a discussion with the Charlotte Area Association of Black Journalists, and we're talking about the slow fade of black journalists in the industry, whether it's radio or whether it's print media, magazines, newspaper, what is um, the effect of not having black journalists in the community, speaking on the radio, giving a voice to the issues that matter most to you? And is Internet radio the way to go, or is that the way um, to wipe out the black journalists and the voice in the community? Will people have easy access? So we're going to get into some of that discussion as well. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. We're able to spend time with friends and family, loved ones, but now it's time to get back to business, back to work. So we're going to make, motivate your business with MotivationMarketingFirm.com right after this break. Thank you for joining us today for This Needs to Be Said. There is an elephant in the room. Let's talk about it. Before we get into our segment with Dana on MotivationMarketingFirm.com and Marketing Trends, I'd like to welcome to the show at this time Ms. Asha Sims. She wants to share with us an event that's happening with Johnson C. Smith and uh, bringing awareness uh, to uh, safety. And uh, Let me get my words together. Johnson C. Smith is, has a safety and prevention coalition bringing um, awareness to uh, rape, sexual assault, and gender violence. They want to stop this, and men are going to walk a mile in her shoes, and it's the International Men's March. So at this time, I'd like to welcome, welcome Asha to the show. How are you? Hi. Hi, Catherine. How are you doing? It's been a long time. Other than being a little, I know, other than being a little tongue-tied, I'm great. Goodness. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> it's Monday. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Yes. Yeah. So tell us about this event that Johnson C. Smith will be hosting. Okay, great, great. Um, the event is sponsored through the John C. Smith I Matter Department, which is a grant-funded grant um, program here on John C. Smith campus to assist the students in increasing um, awareness on healthy lifestyles, healthy relationships amongst um, sexual violence, date rate, and domestic violence. Um, <clears throat> it's very challenging here um, getting the students to understand boundaries now that they come to a university, you don't have the parents, um, a lot of the structure that you had before and now are starting to be exposed to more in their, in their selves and learning different ways to deal with people. So with this march <clears throat> that we have coming up is in support for Sexual Assault Month, with this, which is this month, and the event is called Walk a Mile in Her Shoes. It will be this Wednesday April 24th from 1 to 5 at the Johnson C. Smith practice field. And what it is is actually a walk where men walk in high heel shoes. Yes, they we expect them to be in heels. We have shoes ordered for some size 12 and 13. And oh, wow. we're asking, yeah, all our students, uh, many students to participate, some faculty um, here at the university. Uh, President Carter will be doing um, an opening 
uh, ceremony or opening statement for us here. Um, so we have a lot of support. Power 98 would have their um, van out there, um, along with some other community sponsors um, to uh, assist us in this wonderful event. So we ask the community to come out and support us too. It doesn't just cater to the students, but um, we want to see as many of us out there. Um, they just had this event at South Carolina State, and it was largely represented by the population. So I am really recruiting our African-American males to get out there. Um, a lot of them are shunned it because they, they think, oh, I'm not getting out there in the hills. But that's the whole point of this, to understand what it's like to be in our shoes and understand the females that have been victims of any type of sexual assault and rape. Now, what brought this up as, you know, something, first of all, I want to know how long this has been going on, This um, bring this awareness to that. But the other thing is, what, why is this so important? Because somebody who doesn't understand this um, this cause may need to mm-hmm. know the answer to that. Why is that so important? Yeah, my kids have gone okay. off to college, and, right. you know, but, but explain that. Um, well, first, Walker Mile in Her Shoes um, has been going on for a couple of years now um, through a project of Venture Humanity, Inc. It's a 501c9 profit organization that um, eventually started this event and it's become a nationwide thing to increase the awareness of this um, uh, issue in our community. And it's another way to bring the men out to support the women. A lot of times when we have or you hear of any events that are dealing around domestic violence or sexual assault, it's always females that are attending. So the purpose of this event is to get the men out to support us and also to have another perspective of the men of what it's like to be in our shoes and and the situations that we are involved in as women with um, sexual assault and rape, even though it does occur to males too, but this is more of a stand-up for the men to support the women in stopping rape, sexual assault, and gender and gender violence. Wow. Okay. So um, I'm excited. I applaud you for bringing this um, to This Needs to Be Said and bringing it to the community. I'm glad mm-hmm. that the other media outlets are going to be a part of that. It's exciting that President Carter yes. is going to come and, and give opening remarks. Uh, this I, I just read something. I think Davidson, um, either Davidson, North Carolina, or either Davidson College, they just did it too, and they had a picture of the guys walking in the shoes. So yes, I think um, yes. it, it takes a real man to walk in heels. It uh, does. To support it does. a woman. <laughs> it really does. I know how to, right? So this is going to be very hurt my interesting. Feet, so. <laughs> <laughs> I know someone said, "Are you going? Are you going to get out there and walk?" I said, "I do it every day." <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I let so you guys it's always tough pain. for me to have a time limit on my heels. So you know, so exactly. how far do they have to walk in these shoes? Is it like two um, or three minutes or? What? Like literally well, we a mile, asked them like to actually do um, a whole mile or uh, four times Ooh. around the practice field. Yeah. So. And, is there a um, foot masseuse <laughs> at the end or a pedicure at the end for these guys? I know something. They <laughs> <laughs> now, how can the community the come and support? Need to have some net time. But I says um, for the community to come out, what exactly are you looking for? What are you asking them in, in a way of support? Do you want them just to show up? Do they need to bring something? Um, we either ask them to donate money. Support. What do they need to do? Mm-hmm. Um, support is always wonderful. Also, if they actually want to come and walk, because we're even asking people if you don't have heels to still come just in support. It's all in numbers just to show that everybody's out here to support the call. So even if you're not coming to walk in heels, and it's not just males, if we even ask some females if you wish to come out, if you want to walk in your heels, you're welcome. Um, if not, just the support uh, for the um, whole purpose of this event. As far as if there are any businesses that are looking for sponsors, we are asking for assistance on um, water donations for the um, participants that walk. Um, if any businesses want to um, donate any gift cards, we will be donating, um, having giveaways um, so often to the participants that are participating in the event. So as Who's you know, college students, What's your contact they information? They always need stuff. Um, they can contact myself, Asha Sims, at asims at jcsu.edu. That's my email. Or they can contact me at 704-378-3550. All right. Thank you, Asha, for being a part of this needs to be said. I have posted that on my personal page, the group page, and All the right. fan page. And that's going to hit Twitter and LinkedIn as well. So I'm looking forward to this being a successful event for you all. All right? Thank you, Catherine. Thank you for your support. You're welcome. Have a great day. Bye-bye.
Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for joining in to This Needs to Be Said. I am Dana Sidberry with Motivation Marketing Firm. Today we're going to talk about how to keep up with the latest marketing trends in your business. Again, that is how to keep up with the latest trends in, I'm sorry, the latest marketing trends in your business. Um, we always talking about, um, you know, online marketing, uh, radio, advertising, uh, email blasts, social media blasts, just, just anything marketing. And you have to stay abreast of what's happening in the world and, you know, what things are changing in marketing. You have to stay up on top of your game because, of course, you know, if you're not revolving or, you know, evolving with the times, then you're going to be left behind, and we don't want that to happen in your business. Okay? So uh, we're going to jump right into it. Catherine, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here today. I really do appreciate it. So, guys, get your pen and papers out. And uh, just like Catherine always says, because get ready to take notes, I'm going to give it to you. So I think nowadays the main marketing tools that people utilize are uh, social media. Um, you may take advantage of some social media blasts. Um, there is a lot of online advertising that's happening nowadays. And flyers. Um, people love to get a flyer when they are starting a business or, you know, have something that they want to get out to the masses. And, and actually, there's nothing wrong with uh, flyers or, you know, things like that. In fact, I do recommend that you have those ready. Um, outside of the business cards, that is. You have to have a business card if you are a business owner. I don't care what it is you do. You may, uh, you know, clean trash cans for a living, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that's a, that's a great idea, um, cleaning trash cans for a living, because some people don't want to touch them, you know. I just gave you an idea. Just cut me a check. Anyway, make sure that you have a business card for it because that way you can just, you know, hand it out when you go out and people are ready to get that business card from you. Um, and, you know, even if they don't use that business card right away, they do know that they have it or they can give it to someone that will utilize it. So, if you utilize social media sites, that is a that is a huge marketing trend right now. Um, in fact, I, I love to boast that 85 to 90 percent of my business comes from social media, and you know I I am so elated about that. I love you know meeting new people and doing business with new people and and all people too. Um, but I just love being able to reach out to people via social media and then reach out to me. I love to boast, too, that um, I've had people contact me from California, Illinois, um, just, you know, a little bit of everywhere. And I, I was even um, contacting someone in the United Kingdom, and we were talking about working together on a project. And I'm like, that is just crazy, but... That's only because of social media. So, guys, make sure you're taking advantage of social media, okay? And social media is uh, LinkedIn is just a place for business people, guys. You need to be taking advantage of LinkedIn. Now, I, and, and I always say that I'm not the only one that's not taking advantage of social media. I'm sorry, taking advantage of LinkedIn because I'm not. But I'm, I'm on there as much as possible. When I think of it, I jump on there. Um, I met a young man that says that he totally is just on LinkedIn and does 100% of his business on LinkedIn. He doesn't even, I mean, he does have a presence via Facebook and Twitter, but he says, I spend all of my time on LinkedIn. And I, I thought that was great, and I thought that was very refreshing. So, guys, get those LinkedIn profiles together. You know, if you're wanting to do business with other business owners, if that's your niche, make sure that you're on LinkedIn. Okay, so uh, there's uh, there's LinkedIn, there's Twitter, there's Facebook, there's in Instagram, there's Pinterest, um, and there's also event sites, and we'll we'll talk about that a little bit more. But with Twitter, it, it gives you an opportunity to talk to people, you know, that are all over the world, and just 
uh, 140 characters. So you have to get it in and get it done. But everybody is there, and you don't have to worry about being friends with people. I mean, you can definitely follow them, but there is a feed that everybody has access to, and if your information comes across, if they catch it and, and it is a service that they need, then they're going to contact you or at least check out your website. And that's another thing, make sure your website is up to par. We'll go back into that in a little bit. Um, so, you know, Instagram is just for pictures. Guys, pictures is what sells your business. Pictures and also video. If you have an event that you're you're wanting to put together, I've seen people that may not very well have a flyer made up for the event, but they do have pictures of, you know, maybe the host or maybe, you know, sponsors or, you know, their gift bags or what whatever the case. All that does is build up anticipation for your event. And and that's a good thing. You want the anticipation built up for the event or even for your business. I know that I keep referring to events, but, you know, it goes both ways. You want people to anticipate your services, also to anticipate your event or, you know, your business, period. Okay? So make sure you, that you keep things fresh up on your, your social media site. Okay? Um, Facebook is for relationships. Um, you build relationships. You you know your friends are there. Your family is there. And then there's also just the onlookers that you know just watch everything. They may not post on their site, but they are there. You want to make sure that you keep your profile up. And again, guys, these are all marketing marketing trends. They are social media tools, but they are current marketing trends. Okay. Um, so we talked about Twitter, we talked about Facebook, we talked about Instagram, we talked about LinkedIn. Um, I'm not a Pinterest person, um, so I can't really get into that, but I know that it's for pictures and for recipes and things like that. So if you have a catering service, make sure that you're on Pinterest as well. And and people can pin uh, your information up or pin their information up. And, you know, people, anybody can see it you know, friends or, you know, however it's set up, you want to make sure that you're taking advantage of everything. And, guys, these these uh, tools are free. Social media is free. So why not take a minute to make money off of something that is free? I mean, it's a no-brainer. You don't have to invest anything but your time. Now, time is something that costs. Time is money, Okay. So make sure that you are investing your time in these social media sites. It's marketing tools, and they are free. Okay. So the next thing I want to talk about is social media blasts. I'm not sure if you guys are aware of the term social media blast, but we'll talk about it. What a social media blast is, just uh, your information, say, for instance, you want to get out um, that you're running a special in your business today, and you get with someone like myself or anyone else in your your industry that does marketing, that does a blast, and, and you know, let them know what your service is and, and what you want to get out to the, the masses in, in a fast pace, okay? Social media blasts can be done on a daily basis, on a weekly basis or monthly monthly basis. There's a lot of freedom with it. It's all tailored to what your needs are. So when you're communicating with the individual that's doing the social media, blast, let them know what it is that you want to gain, who you're looking for, um, you know, and, and what you want to put out. Recently I had someone to contact me and ask me, did I have a Hispanic following? Now, in all honesty, I had to tell her no. You want to go with someone that is honest because that means that they're not going to take your money unnecessarily. Now, I will take your money, but I'm not going to lie to you and take your money. That's what we pride ourselves on. That is our brand. Um, so I told her, no, I did not have a, his a Hispanic following, and she thanked me for my honesty. So she said she would get back with me soon, and and that's cool. So what we'll do, and what I've done in the past is I've ran specials, um, you know, for people that don't really have a huge marketing budget. In today's economic times, people don't have tens, thousands, whatever to spend on marketing. So you have to keep up with the latest marketing trend, and that is, 
you know, getting information out to people as fast as possible with, you know, little to no money down. And, you know, it's fine. So what I did was I ran I ran a special, um, and usually it's fifty dollars for ten email blasts. It actually equates to thirty because it goes out to Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. But that's just how I do mine. I don't know how everybody else does theirs. So make sure when you're contacting the the individuals that do marketing, you're asking those questions. Guys, we're going to take a break. We're going to come right back. Um, stay tuned with us. We have to. Uh, take some time out for our sponsors. Be right back. Hey, Dana, you just want to keep going. Don't stop right there. We'll go straight through. Thank you, guys, for sticking with us today. With um, This needs to be said. I am Dana Sidberry, Motivation Marketing Firm, just talking about how to keep up with the latest marketing trends. I started with giving information on what the current marketing trends are, and I'm going to tell you how to keep up with those marketing trends. Um, and we talked about social media. We talked about online blasts and, um, you know, online marketing because those are the latest marketing trends to, to date. Um, and if you're not taking advantage of them, you need to get on it because that's just the way that it is right now. Staying on top of the latest marketing trends can present quite a challenge. But make sure that you're using the most up-to-date methods of marketing your businesses. You have to make your presence known, okay? Make sure that your website is very professional and make sure that it's always updated, okay? Another way to stay up on the latest marketing trends is watch people that blog, they blog information out. Um, they keep. They have to keep up with marketing trends and, and things that are are different in the society. Everybody that is in media, they want to know what's hot now, and they want to get the hotness out to their readers or their their listeners or whatever the case. So find a great blog to take advantage of, and and utilize that blog site. Okay. Another way to keep up with the latest marketing trends is, is take advantage of uh, business publications. Um, there's Black Enterprise, there's Forbes, there's um, Entrepreneur. Um, I think there's a there's a business journal. In fact, I know there's a business journal. You should look for that in your respective city. But here in Charlotte, we have the Charlotte Business Journal, and they have to keep abreast of everything that's new. Everything that's going on, you know, in business. So, you know, take a minute out of your busy day, you know, at least once a week to, you know, read a magazine, read a newspaper, or even join a mailing list. Because most of these places, they will send out um, weekly email blasts, you know, about what's going on and what's new and, and what's hot. So join an uh, email list for a marketing business or for um, a marketing publication or business publication, and that's how you'll stay abreast of marketing trends. My favorite one is, you know, check out what your competitor is doing. Don't do exactly what they're doing because then you'll be a buyer. But just, you know, check out every now and again what they're doing, you know, some ideas and make it your own. That's not a problem. You know, it's not a bad thing, and people do it every day. Nothing wrong with it. Utilize it to your advantage. Okay. And I was actually talking. Comfortable, you want them to say, Wow, she has a If you're on the 
the tape. Make sure that it's a nice and clean site. Um, you know, I talk to someone that, that's not in the business of marketing. They're just a consumer. And uh, she said, you know what, Dana? When I'm on Instagram, you know, I am very interested in, in things that people put up on Facebook. I'm sorry, on Instagram. You know, a lot of jewelry. I, You know, I love it. And then I go to the website and then it's like, ugh. I don't even want to purchase because their website is not good. You know, I don't feel comfortable. It's not a nice website. So I'm feeling like these people will take my money. And I thanked her for that feedback. I thought it was great feedback. And it's so true. If I come to your your business, it's not clean, it's not organized, I'm not going to send business, spend money with you. I'm going to, if I do send money with you, it's going to be cash only because I don't know you. You may take my identity. You may, you know, do whatever the case. So that way, um, you know, I won't feel any type of way about, you know, giving you my my information. You never know in day, today's society. So if your business is a reputable business, make sure that that information is conveyed online. And if you guys need some help with your website, definitely give me a phone call, and I'll be happy to help. The last thing I want to talk about is, um, again, staying up on the latest marketing trends is take a minute to invest in your advertising because, and I say that to say, when you advertise, that draws other people that want you to advertise with them. Okay? I know that sounds weird and I know that's not something that you're interested in, but it's true. If you advertise on, say, this needs to be said, someone will hear your commercial and they'll say, okay, well, you know, I'm going to contact that person because I have this event going on and I want them to know about it and I may want them to be a vendor at my event. So, you invested in this needs to be said. Then you've invested in your business if you take care of uh, bins at that person's event that's going to contact you. That's two ways to market your, your business and staying abreast of the trends at the same time because if you did not advertise what this needs to be said, you did you would not find out about the upcoming event and would not have the opportunity to then and be in front of millions of people or, you know, whatever the case is going to be happening at that event. So, you know, just make sure that you're staying abreast of what's happening in the marketing world to make sure that your business is where it needs to be with the apps. And I'll say this quickly and then we're going to wrap up. But with the app, um, you can have an application designed for either a Droid or iPhone, okay? Make sure that if that's something that you want, Make sure you look into that. Um, I don't know the cost of designing apps, but I know that they are very beneficial because what people can do is download your app to their phone and they can get up to the minute details on what it is that you are doing or what your company is doing or, or whatever the case. Google it. That's the easiest way to find it. Or if you need some help, I can let you know of individuals that do apps. So, um, again, make sure that you're staying up on the latest marketing trends. We talked about online marketing. We talked about social media marketing. We talked about social media blasts. We talked about websites, and we talked about applications and how to stay abreast in marketing. I hope that you guys have a great week, and I thank you so much for tuning in to This Needs to Be Said. I am Dana Sidberry with MotivationMarketingFirm.com. Again, that's MotivationMarketingFirm.com. I can be reached via phone, 704-326-2187. Again, at 704-326-2187. Or email me, MotivationMKTG at gmail.com. Have a very successful week and stay motivated, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you for staying tuned to This Needs to Be Said, and I hope that you enjoyed Dana's segment 
on the marketing trends and what tools to use. I, I always learn something. No matter how much you are involved in an industry, sometimes you can get too close to something and not, you know, you just kind of lose some stuff. You get, you know, used to using one way of doing things and forget to look around and see what else is working and definitely check in on your competition and see what they're doing and see what's going good in their world. Did she use the term bite? Don't bite off your competition. That's funny. That's the old school word, but I love Dana to pieces. She keeps it um, fresh, and at the beginning of her uh, segment, she says that I'm going to give it to you. I was like, oh, we're about to go into some hip-hop, but she keeps it fun and, and interesting and helps you motivate your week by motivating your business, giving you good tips, because you probably got through the weekend, and if you were anything like me, you kind of lazed around all weekend as much as you could, and you, you may have just been worn out from last week. Whether you're doing what you love or not, you get tired. So you get to Monday, you want to know, okay, how do I have, you know, the energy, the strength to come up with a new idea? You know, how do I, you know, engage my clients? How do I get new clients? Where do I go to meet new clients? Where do I, you know, just keeping up with everything. So what a way to start your week off with um, Dana of MotivationMarketingFirm.com. We have Valerie Sun coming up in just a moment to share with you what's happening in the world of politics. I want to tell you what I did over the weekend. I went to the Charlotte Area Association of Black Journalists, and our topic this week was the slow fade of black journalism on the mainstream radio. Is Internet taking away from what the community really needs, or is it adding value to it? Of course, with me being an Internet radio show, my belief is that it's adding value to it. This conversation stemmed from Michael Bazin uh, going black, basically, and what that means in the radio world is that he's not, not on the radio anymore. Skip Murphy has quickly taken his place, and where is Michael Bazin, and where does his followers go now that he is no longer on air? What do they do? And my thought is he should have already had a backup plan. Ten years in the industry, and this is not a sign that how a sign of how you can get wrapped up in what you're doing. You're doing a good work, but you miss. Um, being sideswiped when the company that you're under no longer wants you there, and so he's no longer there. So he has to find another way to get the word out to his audience if he's going to stay connected to his audience, you know. I know he was in Charlotte for for, uh, for Sisters Only. However, he wasn't on the radio, and nobody was really talking about him being here for, for Sisters Only. So with the world of um, – the black journalists, they're going to open up some lines. The FCC is going to open up some lines, and what a great opportunity it would be, I think, for more community radio stations. And when I say community, I mean the people that are going to talk about the things that are important to you, just like we do on This Needs to Be Said. Uh, not just the Internet radio station. There will be a building that you can come into, and you don't necessarily um, – that you can you can come in and sit behind the microphones. It's a little bit different from Internet radio, uh, just a little bit, uh, depending on how it's set up. Mine isn't set up where you can come into an actual studio. I can come to you. My situation is more mobile than a standalone building as a terrestrial radio station would be. But I think it would be nice to know what's happening as far as your little league and your community nonprofits and the news that matters to you, like when they talked about Trayvon Martin. Is it important for you to know about Trayvon Martin if you don't live in his community? It might be if it's going to help your community tighten up on the Trayvon Martins that are right in your neighborhood. You see what I'm saying? So I'm looking forward to the move um, to some community-based radio stations coming that's going to be on your FM dial this year if you've been following the news about it. They are going to open up some applications or uh, uh, open up a application uh, window for people who want a community radio station, and that can keep the internet with it. But if we keep the mainstream radio stations going the way that they're going, 50 to 55 minutes of music and commercials, and only five to 10 minutes of actual talk, letting you know what's happening, you're going to miss a lot in the community. And I don't think whatever your community is, whether it's African American, whether it's Hispanic American. Latino, if it if it is Caucasian American, Asian American, whatever your community is, you're going to be disconnected from it because how do you really, you know, get all you need in five or ten minutes per hour? Enough of that, but that's what I did this weekend. We are getting ready for our political moment with Valerie's son. So at this time I'd like to say hey and welcome. How are you? I am wonderful. It's always great to be here another week, um, to get another week of political uh, information started. Uh, Again, um, your previous guests are always so hard to follow. 
So I do the best I can here to the end. It's a great way to get you wrap up the show. <laughs> that tough match to follow. But uh, yes, I'm uh, you know glad to be here again. Wonderful weather here in uh, the city of Charlotte. A little cold today. I wasn't able to wear shorts today. A little colder than I thought. But other than that, a great day and wonderful weather. Yeah, it's been so nice all weekend. I was cold. But um, there are a couple things going on. Um, first, I guess I'll start with something that's kind of been like in the uh, like in the local news, something we've seen a lot lately. And then it's sort of the ban on dogs. Now, what it was, you have oh. several different kinds of dogs that actually have been banned. All, all the proposals to get them banned. Now, this is being led by Rodney Moore. It's one you and I have seen, and uh, uh, he's, of course, a Democrat here from Mecklenburg County. He's now a uh-huh. state representative. Well, a bill that he introduced will require anyone taking ownership of dogs such as Rottweilers, I think this is Astiffs, Chows, and what's known as Wolf Hybrids. Well, what he actually proposed would require a background check for owners of these particular dogs. He's saying the reason that he put the background check in was he didn't want irresponsible people to use these type of animals illegally. Now, wait, 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 wait. You're doing the background check on the dog or the owner of the dog? <laughs> they do the background check on the owner of the dog. Okay, listen, you laugh, but you might have really missed the background check on the dog. Where has this dog been, like a car for the dog? <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay. I was like, whoa. Yeah, the background check on the owner. Maybe I said it wrong. Okay. On the actual okay. owners of the dogs. Because his problem was, again, he didn't want irresponsible people getting them and using them to fight and do other things that you have with dogs. Gotcha. Now, the problem was started because you have a website, nopitbullbans.com, which could into uh, fighting breed specific legislation. And all the animal rights sponsored legislation across the United States is unfair and unjust. And they're basically saying anyone should have the right to own any dog they want to. But again, the only thing being proposed by uh, Mr. Moore is also being backed by Larry Pittman, who is a Republican. So you have someone on both sides. He's a Republican from Cabarrus County. He's saying that he also will be in favor of running extensive checks on those that do own dogs. That will be if you own one right now and if you get one you know, uh, upcoming. That is something to be aware and certain to uh, to see. If you, in fact, again, the dogs they're specifically talking about now are Rottweilers, Astiffs, Chows, and what's known as the Wolf Hobbits. Now they want some. Uh, they need to know who you are and how you got these dogs. And again, what are you? What are your background? Everything about you prior to you getting your hands on a dog. Um, something very interesting happened last week. Was a uh, tip is really flared. Uh, Actually, over the weekend, but it, but it started you know, on Friday when Republican senators kind of objected to some Democratic criticism of those that were attempting, illegal immigrants that are now attempting to get their citizenship. Senator Chuck Grassley out of Iowa, he had to actually cut off, uh, I think it was Senator Schumer uh, up in New York. But they suggested that some of the some of the incidents that took place, of course, last week on Boston, in Boston, rather, could have a direct effect on immigrants. And what are now illegal immigrants getting their citizenship and becoming citizens? Um, Jeff Sessions out of Alabama basically said the same thing when he came out and said that um, Schooner was the meaning of several witnesses that were called to a judiciary hearing on last week. He complained uh, in the sessions that uh, several of the, of the words and the things and the terminology as he was reflecting upon the immigrants was insulted. And he said it's being based on, again, some of the things that happened last week uh, in Boston. Now, the bill that's proposed was already basically sent through the judiciary chairman, which is uh, Patrick Leahy, where basically the people that are there were already in the process of getting their immigration. But the problem is stemmed from not only was it difficult for those people now to go through, you got to go back to the Senate Majority Leader, uh, Harry Reid. But now those that are in the process of getting immigration behind those people becoming legal citizens are now facing more and more legislation and more things are now being proposed to make it more difficult for those people who are already having a very difficult time becoming U.S. citizens. Now, videos such as this make it more and more difficult, and I guess whenever acts of terrorism take place, it does sort of make it more and more difficult because, again, they're all stereotyped and categorized. And it's basically, he made pretty much said straight out, he doesn't want more immigrants to become legal citizens, which is always a touchy subject and always something that takes place that, that causes a lot of hardship because, again, just like everything else that takes place, those that are innocent have nothing to do with what's happening because they look like or appear to be like someone else. It becomes difficult for them to become citizens. This is very similar to what happened after uh, 9-11. Some of the same things took place with those that were just simply going through the process of becoming legal citizens. Um, Harry Reid, speaking of Harry Reid, who is the Senate Majority Leader, he has a state online sales tax that is now on the Senate floor. 
Now, he began the process on last Tuesday for a bill that would allow more and more small businesses uh, to advance. It's actually called the Marketplace Fairness Act. Now, what happened is that during this act, before I become a full chairman, the first going through again has to go through the Senate, like I mentioned. But the Senate can vote as early as next week on the actual tax. It's a Senate bill put out mainly by Democrats. Now, what happens in this bill is discussing the issue with leadership and colleagues on the committee about exactly how it would take place where the different sales tax would be provided to small businesses. And this is also being backed by Mark Backus of Montana. Now, if the law were to pass, it's the so-called Rule 14 process, the legislation would again be able to bypass the tax written laws we have now. So I guess the simplest way to put it is those that are starting businesses, those that are doing online sales, are going to get a different tax break. Or the sales tax will be different if, in fact, this proposal goes through. And, again, this is through majority, Senate Majority Leader, Harry Reid. So that is something that uh, is always interesting. Our lawmakers have already kind of tested the bill to kind of see where it would be. And overwhelmingly, uh, actually, by a vote of 75 to 24, it appeared to have gone through when it was just kind of put out in a mock draft. It wasn't actually put before the Senate Judiciary Committee, but now it has done so. So that would be something very beneficial to those online and to those in small businesses. Um, oh, I've got to make sure I mention Mark Sanford. Mark Sanford again. Uh, as we've talked about for several weeks now, Mark Sanford, of course, the former governor of South Carolina, has now uh, launched a district-wide tour. He's going to actually start today. He's going to try to get more and more Democrats involved, and he's going to go in and let them know basically what is taking place and what his stance is after on last week, if you did not hear it, uh, uh, Sanford would actually – charged on last week with trespassing, uh, going back to his ex-wife's home. Now, he said, of course, that he would have permission, was going in there, but it was part of their divorce agreement that, of course, he could not come over there and they had to have everything worked out. He said it was. She said it was not. So as a result of that, the National Republican Congressional Committee, the NRCC, they on last week, they abandoned the Uh They would do all their financial support for his house race and the stronghold he had on the GEP, GOP, I'm sorry, the Grand Ole Party, seems to be declining. Now, a day earlier, like I said, this happened right after the charges of trespassing were filed against him going back to his wife's home. So more and more things seem to be occurring with the former governor. He compared himself to what happened uh, at the Alamo down in Texas. He said it's very similar uh, to what happened. It, it's, it's basically a, a witch hunt, a litany, to not have him back in office. Now, we haven't mentioned before that what he's actually running for is the center spot. Now, on Monday, he again called out uh, his opponent, Ms. Uh, Corbett Bush, and said he denounced everything the Democrats have put in on local TV stations. Of course, they had a field day with this day. It's been put throughout several different publications in South Carolina saying what has happened to Sam. And basically, here we go again. We've talked to her on the show several times about the situation with his former wife and how he was missing while he was governor, and the whole time he was having an illicit affair with the lady he is now in Tinto Barry. So when all that comes out in this, now he's been filed with the trespass charges. So all the things that come out, so what he now is doing, you have a Republican actually reaching out to Democrats saying that that's not the case, that's not what's taking place, and basically trying to get his name cleared, I guess, or get his name in a better standing. But, again, things seem to keep uh, keep taking place and keep happening with former Governor Sanford. Mm. Um, I propose new voter photo ID law that we've talked about here several times on the show. Well, they've now proposed that it's going to cost about $3.6 million to North Carolinians to implement this new plan. That's the price of providing free photos for those without a driver's license and voter education efforts. Now, the voter ID bill cleared another hurdle on Thursday when it was approved by the House Finance Committee in a vote of 18 to 10. Now, that vote followed along party lines with Republicans in favor and Democrats against. It's scheduled for a full House vote on next week. Now, um, a legislative staff actually prepared an analysis of how much it would likely cost to put in such a rule. And, again, this is something they want to have implemented full-wide, statewide, by the 2016 election. It's going to have a trial run on next year, as we spoke about, in 2014. One of the biggest costs, again, is providing free photos of persons who do not hold driver's license or other government-approved photos, such as student IDs, uh, for certain state-supported campuses. Many Democrats offer several amendments. Uh, to the committee on last week, suggesting that there's just no reason to do this. Again, it's something we've talked about here before. Governor McCory, prior to becoming uh, governor, 
and it is something he was in favor of, something he did think was necessary, and that he wanted to implement. So now we're in the process of doing it. So as taxpayers, you're looking at about a $3.6 million hike as far as overall what it would cost to get the new voter ID law implemented and in place. Because, again, they're saying they don't want you coming in to vote. If you do not have the required ID and those who do not have a driver's license would then have to get this ID. And the problem is always cost. How exactly is someone going to pay for this ID if they don't have a driver's license or any kind of state issue ID? Especially someone who, let's say, has lost their license or their license are revoked. They still have a right to vote, but they have no formal ID or no way to actually show any kind of identification. Those are the things that will lead to such situations coming and taking place. So that is something, again, that's going to be $3.6 million. Former Governor Mike Easley has been criticizing the effort in North Carolina Senate to eliminate caps on the number of students in classrooms in the public schools. Of course, you remember a few weeks ago when I was here, I told you about the new bill making sure the kids learn cursive writing. Well, in uh-huh. addition to that, um, the new email is out now. It's talking about the number of students in class sizes. Governor Easley, or former Governor Easley, does not want a, uh, a cap on it. So he said basically each state, each school district can kind of dictate how they do it based on the needs of the kids in their area. It is amazing how many things happen in the school system that have to go to legislation, that has to go through campaigns, has to go through so many works when it would seem to many of us, I guess, looking at it, that would seem something simple, but nothing's ever that simple. It has to go through a long process, and it's gotten to the point again when they've enlisted former, former governor, Mike Easley, to come in and give such statements to try to um, try to make change, and again, it's all for the betterment they keep telling us uh, of what's happening with children. Um, a couple other things. One of the big things that's taking place here uh, in North Carolina is what's happening now with the abortion laws. Um, actually, it's something that has gone on for several weeks now, and it's kind of come to a forefront, because one of the big things that's happened is that when Governor McCory was running for governor in the final debate of his uh, 2012 gubernatorial campaign, which was uh, last year for the election. Gubernatorial, yes, that word again. <laughs> <laughs> he stated he would not sign any new abortion regulations by the Republican Trump legislation, I don't know if a new restrictions based on what had already taken place in 2011, but a series of measures this year, most recently a bill to broaden protection for medical professionals who refuse to participate in abortions. So I guess in simpler terms, something he said he would not change, there was no need to discuss it, he wasn't going to make any changes. There have already been changes made. There have already been proposals put out. That's where the problem comes in. It could be the governor's first time he has decided to basically pull a veto here. And a lot of people are reminding him of the statement, which, again, was in the third and final debate that he made last year. I guess you're going to think already there's no new news or politicians to kind of flip out something that they say. But when you can pinpoint and put your finger on it and actually show them what they said while they were making a statement they made, then they kind of come back on it. That's always something that uh, – I guess they make note of. Now, abortion-related bills, there's three that you actually should be aware of. Bill SB 308 requires doctors to remain on the premises after an abortion until the patient is released and requires the doctors have admitted privileges at a hospital within 30 miles of the clinic. That's been proposed. HB 716, another law, allows doctors to be sued by a woman on behalf for performing an abortion because the sex oh is it imposes fines of up to $100,000 for subsequent violations. Another one is HB 730, which allows employers to decline to offer insurance coverage for contraceptives if they have religious or moral objections and expands the definition of medical providers who can refuse to participate in abortions. None of these laws are now current. And SB 132 requires students to be taught that abortion is among the preventable causes of preterm birth. Now, there's a disagreement in the medical community about whether or not that's true. and But it was a recommendation of the state's child fatality task force. Those are some of the things that are, are now facing Governor McCory, who, again, made the statement he would make no changes to the current abortion law. And, again, that affects so many people that are voting, I guess, for him or not for him. But, again, it's always an issue or a topic when they can actually put their hands on something that you said, and now you've kind of gone back against what your word was. And we can't ever have a week. We can't ever have a week of doing politics without missing uh, President Obama. So I do want to have, I guess, he had a very busy week, as many of us have seen. He was, of course, down in Texas, was part of the explosion and what happened down in Texas, uh, helping them to kind of heal. And he 
gave a speech there. Of course, many of us saw him up in Boston where he met with the, uh, the many of the um, survivors of what took place up in uh, the Boston Marathon. So we've seen him speak at both those events, and this and things he's already done, that he already had scheduled for the week. But one thing that took place was President Obama's nominee that we talked about for Labor Secretary, Thomas Perez, where he kind of went unscathed Thursday from a Senate confirmation hearing because there were a lot of things that were going on. So Thursday was kind of, you know, they kind of let him go by a lot easier than we thought it would be. Um, conservatives have a trade for Perez. Now, he is the administrator's top civil rights enforcer right now, and he's trying to become Labor Secretary. They make him out to be a dangerous liberal who would be overly assertive with several of the rules that they have in the Labor Department. But there was very little tough questioning that Republican adversaries said he deserved. And, again, I think a lot of that was kind of pulled back because of the, what we were as a country on Thursday. The situation we were, you know, all around had an effect on that because when I watched tape of the actual hearing, they were, I guess, so to speak, kind of soft as to what we expected to hear. Um, Republicans on the committee appeared to take special care not to antagonize the race. Uh, they were clearly kind of mindful of the rough public interrogation to backfire on their party. It's like the way things were going right now, you don't want to throw anything out there or put anything else out when he's already going through what we're having now as a country. So we'll see if he actually gets the final nomination. But, again, that's uh, Thomas Perez, who was attempting to become Labor Secretary. And as we mentioned here before, no one can ever accuse President Obama of not employing minorities. But he certainly has done that with both of his uh, appointees. Not only were they minorities as far as being women, but he had the Hispanic, um, the short mayor, uh, on the – only, only already in there as a chief justice. Now you see him doing it with several other positions. And, of course, we mentioned here on the show that our current mayor, Anthony Fox, is in line for a possible position in his cabinet. So there's certainly no shortage of minorities that uh, President Obama, I guess, has sought out to get into the White House. So that's certainly something that's always a credit to our president. And uh, those are some of the major things, the things I thought I needed to kind of highlight and, and, and uh, I guess, outline this week in politics. And as always, um, whenever you're watching the news, because there, you know, we could go on, there's so many things, but whenever you're watching in the news, again, as I tell you each week, because I need to conclude each show with probably in the first five minutes, you're always going to see something political. You're going to see something that's taking place in your community, in your area, it's going to require a vote, or it's going to require your attention, because it's already being put into fruition. It's already being voted upon. It's already taking place. These are the things you have to be very aware of uh, each and every week. Each and every opportunity that you get to watch the news, you don't have to necessarily sit down and watch shows like Meet the Press. Only kind of political we watch those. But certainly watch the <laughs> news each newscast. Watch the things on CNN. Being aware, because you'll see it happen so many times. There's so many things that have been put right in front of you, being brought to the forefront, that unfortunately many of us are just not aware of until it's too late or until it affects you directly. But being aware of the law again, when you become a voter, as you are, you become an educated voter. And then you can hold people more accountable for what they've done, just as people are doing with Governor McCory when he stood out right there and said he'd make no changes in their voice law. That's an example of when you can hold someone accountable. Because many people have said, wait a minute, this is what you said. And they're showing him the tape. They're showing him what he said. They're showing him the transcript. Mm-hmm. Those are the things you do when you're an educated voter and you're aware. If people had not watched and kept up with the debate, they would have known what he said. So that's just one example of when you should always be uh, in that situation. Again, be an educated voter and be aware of everything that's taking place on the news because it's being brought right to you. Now I have a question for you uh, from someone submitted to me about um, Internet sales tax legislation on marketplace fairness. Yes. Um, It kind of goes off of what I spoke on earlier, um, dealing with Harry Reid. Harry Reid Uh is the uh, the Senate Majority Leader. Now, he began the process on last week. Now, the, the state online sales tax fix is going to kind of leapfrog its way right to the city floor. It's going to kind of bypass some of the steps typically taken to break something along. Now, um, again, Harry Reid put this out on late Tuesday. There was a lot of bill known as the Marketplace Fairness Act to come before the full chamber without first going through the Senate Finance Committee, whose leaders largely disliked the proposal. A lot of them are against it, again, on the Senate Finance Committee. I spoke on last week for Reid. Basically, had no comment on whether the Senate leaders would try to pass it through unanimous consent or hold the bill until a fuller, more scheduled debate could take place. But the Senate could vote early next week on an online sales tax, and the Senate Democratic aide uh, has already came and said that's basically what they expect to do. Senator Max Bacchus of Montana has rallied 
gets to measure uh, during last month's budget debate. He said at the time that he wanted to address the issue as part of a comprehensive tax reform through Senate Finance Committee. Now, if Reed, uh, again, used the so-called Rule 14 process, the legislation would again bypass the Tax Writing Committee. So what all that says is basically when this law is in fact, if in fact it is, it is going to affect the online sales tax. And it, it, it could go as early as next month, something that will be passed in wow. the law. But uh, that is certainly something that has uh, kind of been brought to the forefront and something that I did see with, uh, Senator, again, Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid. Okay, okay. So I just I thought I heard you say something about it, but I was waiting, and then I said, "Well, I want to make sure, sure, because someone sent that question directly to me that we had that one um, addressed." So, as always, thank you for bringing the political segment to this needs to be said. People that are in the politics definitely tune in for that, and they're sending in their questions. So that's that's our that's a good thing. We're growing in that area. So thank you, Valerie Sun, for continuing your mom's legacy and bringing us the the news we can use. We'll see you back on next Monday. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you gained something from what has been shared. Special thanks to the creators of the TNTBS jingle. It was written by Lamont Champ Josie and composed by Robert Jenkins. Special thanks to our sponsors, Restoration Ministries, Church of God in Christ, where they're restoring the world through God's Word. They're located at 1204 Commercial Avenue, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28205. Men of Action with LaShawn Huntley. Promoting social change one man at a time. They're located at menofaction.web.officelive.com. Therapeutic Concepts, Inc. with Asha Sims. They can be found at www.tconceptsinc.org. Center for Sexual Health and Education with Dr. Willa Hamm. A Lifetime of Great Sex. They can be found at www.bestsexualadvice.com. Thank you to everyone who supports us by logging into the chat room, hanging out with us on the phone lines, and just logging in and listening online, period. Be sure to tune in each weekday at 2 p.m. Right here on blogtalkradio.com forward slash this needs to be said. Tell someone about the great show you just heard. Heck, if you thought it sucked, tell them anyway. Either way, tell them to tune in and share their opinion with us. We'd love to hear from you. Our email is let's talk at this needs to be said dot com. There is an elephant in the room, and hey, we're going to talk about it. You were thinking it? We're going to talk about it. Until we meet again in the same place at the same time, have a super day. <laughs>